Hey everyone, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage View Lab alongside me, Kevin O'Brien, Test Lab Manager, and in between us, the Advantech Sky 7221. Now, we just recently reviewed this for the site, but in this video, we want to take a, a, an extra special deep dive into the, uh, the build because this build is really unique. What, what stands out immediately to you? Usually you don't see hard drives inside of a server. All right, so there are hard drives inside the server, which is kind of cool and a little bit different. In fact, this server can be configured in a number of different ways. We've got the three and a half inch drive chassis. Uh, Advantech does offer an all NVMe two and a half inch, 24 across the front option. Uh, but even our three and a half inch chassis is a little bit unique in that we've got four of these uh, orange tab guys across the top our NVMe base, so that's actually how we tested it, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. Uh, but we also have the four drives inside, which gives us 12 capacity drives and four performance drives, if I did my math correctly. Yes, you did. Okay, and there's also uh, two SATA M.2 slots in the back here. Yeah, they really loaded this thing with everything you'd need, and there's not a lot of limitations. You have your storage, and thankfully, so the problem we've seen with uh, certain servers is um, They'll give you so many storage options, but then you lim uh, you're limited on what you can actually output from the box. Right. So a lot of times when we see these NVMe servers, we're giving up PCIe slots in the back for the drive controllers. Uh, in this case, we don't have that sacrifice, which is nice. Uh, but just quickly, as we take a look back through the front, we've got your four fans that are you know pinch and replaceable. Uh, but the drives here are are what's pretty cool. And actually, if we just slide one of these out, just so you can see how this works these little trays pop right out and on the back they've got the these four little feet that kind of clip in and, and slide forward uh, so they're easily serviceable probably not hot swappable or maybe they are I didn't even quite think about that honestly yeah it, well it depends on if you have uh, proper cable management but overall I mean you're gonna have uh, sensors if you open up the server but uh, you should be able to do this uh, wait that's a lid sensor yeah I thought or that was an emergency telegraph yeah, it, it depends on how you want to use it. Well, that was my favorite part. I thought it was a telegraph, and now I'm not so enamored by it. Uh, but we'll pop this out in a second and show you that as well. As we slide to the back of it, though, uh, the two drives, like you mentioned, and a number of PCIe slots for expansion. Yeah, you have uh, six PCIe slots, which is uh, pretty nice. And for um, high-speed uh, Ethernet, you have four SAP Plus ports on the back. Well, you always like the ports on board because then you don't have to use a card necessarily. And exactly. You still have that I.O. flexibility. Yeah. Yeah, and we're not still seeing not a lot of 10 gig on board, but it's increasing. Uh, yeah, you'll see, we'll find certain 10 gig or 25 gig or uh, RJ45 uh, 10 gig, but usually you don't find a lot of SAP Plus ports uh, on board. So let's go ahead and take out this mid plane because that, that's kind of neat because the way they've tucked the CPUs and DRAM underneath uh, is uh, is really sort of the the engineering marvel here. So under this tray, as it pops out, there'll be a little um, uh, a little black piece to help keep the uh, the cooling underneath. You want to try to slide this guy up? All right, we're out, mostly out. There we go. This is not hot swappable. No, this is less field serviceable. And then this shroud comes off. And underneath, we've got uh, dual Intel Cascade Lake CPUs, and we're using four of the 24 DIMM slots. This unit does support three terabytes of memory, if you're so inclined. For the use cases where you would see this, maybe not so much memory, uh, but uh, a lot of great use cases around uh, anything software-defined that can take advantage of the NVMe drives and the capacity. Yeah, it would work very well for a tiering platform. Yeah, thinking Store One, any of the software-defined S3 guys, like your Cloudians, things like that might be uh, interesting. Even maybe Backup Target for, uh, yeah. for something like that, too. So there's a lot of different use cases, of course, primary storage, and you don't have to use the NVMe configuration. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what we saw in performance, Kevin, as we transition to that. You tested four NVMe SSDs in this thing, right? Yeah, so we had uh, four four terabyte uh, drives as the uh, main performance tier, and it does pretty well. Some of this is uh, hitting the peak of four drives and the uh, CPUs, but we got north of uh, 2.5 million IOPS 4K random read, which is pretty nice. On the uh, random write side, this guy topped out at uh, probably around 670,000 IOPS. Okay. Uh, and latency was actually pretty good. In both of these, the uh, random read topped out at 
just under two uh, milliseconds or point uh, two milliseconds mm-hmm. on uh, random right uh, came a little bit higher at uh, a little bit over uh, right around under point uh, four milliseconds uh, for bandwidth though you're looking at um, I mean almost fourteen gigabytes a second and that's just on that's the four NVMe. that's four drives yeah and so when you think about the play for this in a software defined box is really if these drives are well optimized, if the software is well optimized to take advantage of the drives as a hot tier, or even just as a flash pool and then using the disk for uh, you know secondary storage within the box, you can drive some really impressive. Band- and it, we're not even using the four best NVMe drives in the world either. Yeah, this would be pretty fun, especially when you start considering that with the open uh, PCIe slots, you could put in a hundred gig card. Yeah, and well, there's we didn't even mention the there's an OCP slot there too for yeah. those that are becoming more popular. So on sequential write, uh, this is gonna be a little bit slower, but still slow in the range of like uh, still faster than four gigabytes a second. Right. Uh, in our uh, SQL workloads, this is an area where we're still around like eight hundred thousand high ups peak. Um, and uh, as we move along, I mean, the key takeaway is latency is really low, performance is great. And there's not a lot of, uh, I mean, if you went, if you start looking at the hard drives, it's going to be obviously slower. Sure. But a lot of people are understanding that these days. And this, with this, though, you have your dedicated drives for a fast tier, dedicated drives for a capacity tier, and there really aren't a lot of limitations. No, I mean, the the uh, density is a great story here. And when you think about smart software, like we said, that can take advantage of the NVMe drives and the capacity, then you've got uh, a pretty wide open field. The thing is for me, like this engineering is really cool, but just not enough people know about Advantech. I mean, we've worked with them for a couple of years, but we still haven't seen all their platforms. I mean, they're they're doing these really cool solutions, but they've been locked into uh, use cases that are less mainstream enterprise. So most of our viewers and readers probably don't even know about the company. Yeah, it's it's a shame, but they are coming. Uh, they, we are starting to see them more in the lab, and it's uh, pretty fun seeing another offering. Yeah, so we are seeing more of them. They're doing some of their own drives. They're doing a lot of their own uh, uh, PCBs and silicon. So there's a lot of good stuff coming here, and we hope to see much more from these guys. So make sure to check out Adv- Advantech. It's a, uh, a great company with uh, several really interesting server platforms, and we hope to see more of them in soon. Until next time, thanks for tuning in.